directionless, directionless organization. As you said, you know, to kind of put more emphasis on it, right, this needs to be a spotlight year for them. They really need to come out and show that they are a legitimate contender, not only in their respected region, um, but also with the ability to make deep-seated playoff runs. You know, you got to kind of start that somewhere. Otherwise, they'll kind of just be known as a really kind of, as you had shaped it earlier, uh, just kind of like a potential late season team that can upset you and really you know maybe it doesn't come to fruition for them, maybe it does you know but you want to see them string something together you go six and five your first split of last year and then you finish five and six in your second split so again lacking inspiration it's been a little lackluster from their side you want to see a fire light under them and get things going here tonight what better way to do it than an, an unproven mars hill team that's also trying to yeah. make a name for themselves yeah, brand new entry inside of the CCL this season. Mars Hill looking to make themselves uh, at least a nice debut. Uh, AG, Slapex, Mazo, and Kalen are going to be the four people that make up this roster. And really, when I look at this team, um, <clears throat> you know, Slapex is a name that I actually recognize myself. Um, maybe hasn't been the most proven player when it comes to the top end of challengers, but has played a decent bit um, and, and at least is recognizable. So I, I'm, I'm looking for him to be kind of that, that main core, at least from my personal uh, viewing early on in the series. But this is a good chance for us to get to see this roster not only play together, uh, but really show true potential of what they have against, again, a, a decent LSU team. This isn't, a, you know, an mm -hmm. LSU team that's going to be sitting at the bottom of the barrel uh, of their division. Uh, they're going to be floating around right around that 500 line. Uh, might be able to kind of elevate into that next step in inside of the CCL this season. Um, <clears throat> but overall, I, th I think the purple and gold have a really good opportunity to really make this season a, a genuine good like good venture for them. Uh, whereas Mars Hill, um, you know, whether you do really well or not so great this season, uh, you know, it's your first year in the CCL. No one's really going to bat an eye at that. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, let the record be known that no matter what happens between either of these two teams, um, there, there's only going to be one direction they can go, and that's going to be up. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And for Mars Hill, even on top of that, you can build it. Uh, three of the four players are freshmen. So even if you have, uh, like you said, the only direction you can trend is upward. So no matter what year you have, have the potential what could be three players to return not to you know dive too far ahead but it's just that potential you look at with it's a young roster yep. so uh, again though it's their first year it will not be the last time um you know that you would hear of this team after this season so expect good things from these teams going to i'm excited because this is the first uh, kind of series that we have where uh, again pretty lackluster at lsu they want to do something, you know, inspiring and make a run for themselves. And sure, it's your first year if you're Mars Hill and no one will bat an eye if you don't perform well, but you still want to perform well and come out. So both teams with a clean slate to come out here tonight and just give us an absolute showing. Absolutely. Uh, we'll take a look at our map set here now for our best of five series. We'll start things off, of course, with a hard point, but we'll go to Fortress for map one, something we haven't seen here tonight. And of course, uh, we knew we were going to get it again eventually. Three hotels back to back to back. It's like our Tuscan from last year. Uh, it just seemed like every map, uh, every map set had like triple Tuscan somewhere in there. But back to back there, uh, of course, if necessary, four, four, and five. But we'll end back on Fortress. So only two maps throughout the entirety of this. You can see the bands up there at the top of the screen coming from the LSU side of things. Not a big embassy hard point team uh, for Mercado that search and destroy not feeling that too much fortress control uh, not the greatest for them and on the flip side Mars Hill Mercado hardpoint uh, and then both LSC low for the search and destroy and controls where they're just not too comfortable on so not playing any of those maps that we see of course except that fortress that LSU banned uh, and for that control but uh, it, it you know th this is a, a very difficult map to kind of demonstrate your way around in hardpoint such a close quarter map you have to be very uh, kind of meticulous of how you want to dictate the spawns how you want to be able to push around the map uh, to make different routes to make different plays you can't push up too far or else you risk you know losing a specific part of the map or you lose maybe a part of a hill and that's where everything just goes wrong so uh, lsu i i think are going to have an advantage here because of how long some of these guys have played together um but you know all it takes is one crack sub to just dominate the map it really does and with such an unproven marcel team that so few people have had eyes on uh, again they really can come out here and you don't have much of a game plan against them it's not like you can go off years prior or returning players it's kind of an unknown and uh, maybe for mars hill and to their advantage they can catch lsu off guard in the first map or so uh depending on how things start to shape up but like you said it takes one player to take over especially on a fortress to open things up you you referenced hotel being similar to a tuscan in a sense as far as a map favorites amongst players but i mean looking at a fortress it plays like a package sometimes where quite a bit scrappy and a couple <laughs> more money hills on it as well so it's, it's all it's scrappy and it's also punishing for it 
Yeah, and, and I think that's, again, like, you know, how we used to kind of gauge Makaj as, like, the starting hard point to a series. It was like, okay, well, can we learn about these teams, you know, coming into this? Uh, you know, where are they going to be able to go from here? And you know, how is that going to dictate the rest of the series? Uh, especially with the Mars Hill roster, where we don't know a lot about them. We'll get to see how their aggression pans out against a formidable team. We'll get to see what LSU does uh, when it comes to rotational breaks, when it comes to that that, that mid-map play that can be also crucial here on Fortress. I, I think, you know, again, not only are we going to learn a lot about these teams, but we'll get to see their weaknesses and, and their strengths immediately out of the gate. Uh, but we'll get to see how they play with one another. Is there going to be that immediate chemistry from LSU? Is Morris Hill going to be yet a, a, a new roster, a newly formed roster, still a coherent and cohesive roster that is going to be able to be a well-oiled machine throughout the map? But we, we genuinely don't know until until that first couple of seconds drops in and, and we get to see that map start to unfold for itself. But Regardless of whichever way you kind of pan this out, Tigers versus Lions, whoever comes out on top here, going to be feeling good for their division. Uh, but it's going to be a great start to either one of these team seasons. It really will be. And again, just to talk about at least what we know of Mars Hill, impressive that you come into the league and you earn a spot in, in Division One. Uh, that is something yeah. to be said for, for how they can perform. You know, you, it wasn't easy. And a lot of teams that maybe could have, should have been in D1, you know, now finding themselves falling into maybe some lower divisions. So, come out and, and make a statement the way they have th thus far though there may there may not be a lot of information on them enough <laughs> to know that they're a formidable team right we gotta yeah. remember what what division we're in and what we're doing here like said, both teams absolutely can take the reins and take over a series and close it out quickly what can you bring if you're the unsung team of a division and for lsu like you said it's been uninspiring and at times been a little lackluster trying to turn it around starting now Kalen shots under the bam is going to get him in towards P1. Pabby around the corner. Snaps. Beautiful little head tap. And Rana will pair for another one as well. Trying to get in towards the hill. It's going to be Slapex laying down. I an AR in hand. Nate around the corner going to force the LSU players to back on off. The Travenator will get absolutely beamed from the top ropes there. And as Slapex tries to get around the corner, a bit over aggressive maybe, but is Ronan who's on four in a row. Still for caught LSU up in the kill feed. That's six in a row and streaks earned already right off the rip. Beautiful start here for Ron as he pops yet another three piece. And they continued to hold on to P2 Oof. spawns. Mars Hill didn't get a ton of time off P1 in the back 10, gonna go the way of LSU Cod. So, should be a nearly tied game either way, just 30 seconds between the two teams. P2 is gonna pop. You have pressure from the front if you're Mars Hill. You take care of Vincent P1. You can see Mars Hill's putting your emphasis on wrapping to the back, maybe trying to secure spawns and get players to spawn P3. That's exactly what they get. Now they'll collapse. If you're LSU, you like your rotation here. Mazzo all the way through the back lines, helping out with the rest of the teammates. Ronan in towards the bottom of the museum building is going to be able to find one, but it's AG from the back lines who's able to snap for the first. Trade immediately after the fact. 2v2 back and forth. Kalen to the staircase. Pre-aim going to be at least panning out for him well now. Going to be weak in the corner, trapped for a bit. Mazo helps out for his teammate too, and as Kalen hops back around the corner, it's a beautiful set of kills for Mars Hill Esports. Caught LSU looking once again to break back in. Oh, we talked about it. The way that you can play Fortress at times, some of these hard points. Uh, Ronan's been sitting back here off spawn. That was at about 30 seconds left. Ends up getting found out and, and chopped down. But the idea of how important rotations are for these money hills, God LSU, very much aware of it, unfortunately, gets sniffed out and they aren't able to make anything of it. But you let Mars Hill chain a hill like this and suddenly mm -hmm. this game could be a lot of proportion. We say that with so many of these hard point maps, but it is so much the, so the case. We could be looking at a 120 the 27 margin here when things are all said and done. Yeah, Four Fortress is just such a difficult map to dictate, but once you get that pacing down, it, it just works so well in your favor. And as Mesa will fall, though, it's going to be a nice break from the front double doors for LSU as Mars Hill now going to be forced to fight from that south portion of the map as those purple arrows have that top part. And now you see Petrov on an opportunity for a flank, not maybe set up by LSU, but the game kind of gifts them that. Either way, one player left alive here on the point is going to be Pavi. Caitlin there to the point. Dwarfin goes ahead for a challenge, but it's Mazo who's there for a nice little trade on the back half of it. 20 seconds left here on the hill. LSU wants no part of it. They're going to try and get themselves wrapped over across the map for the P4. Oof. Dwarfling was a good one there, but it's going to back down, like you said, and try to get a good setup over at P4-1 where you can garner a lot of time, but so many points of entry to watch. Got to have your head on a swivel at all times. Mars Hill going to regroup, try to push across the map here with a 50-point lead. They definitely have a buffer, which with they can use to break. Two kills on transition, going to build well as the hill pops. Have you land down low? Waiting for a break in here from Ellis, or excuse me, from the Mars Hill side of things. Ron and Petrov, nice little two piece to open things up, but it's been Kalen. Studded star here for Mars Hill early on that's been able to go ahead. 
find a couple more kills with the Vaznev in hand. Isn't able to find Petrov this time around, but it's Slapex now with AG, who are pushing up back to the staircase. He forces one gun fight, tries to snap to a second, but it's Mazo down below. And now it's LSU who's having to fight from the outside back in towards the middle of the hard point yet again. Slapex to the outside, drop shot, four in a row. Now off the respawn run, it's gonna be over towards the right, but LSU discombobulated on the map. Slow, coordinated push to win you a majority of time. A uh, great push out of them. Now you don't want to give up this back 20 after having fought for what was 30 seconds, 35 seconds left. You're going to get clearance. And unless Slayplex comes off spawn and tries to contest this, this should be all caught LSU to close it out. Now still down 20 or so points as P5 looks to pop Mars Hill, winning line share of time throughout this. And that's behind Kalen. Slaypex starting to get things going as well. And a quiet 10 and 9 out of Mazo. Really starting to get things going. Yeah, Mazo's kind of been in, like, the back half of a lot of these hills, but, like, they've just been, like, like really important, like, small little gunfights that he's taken that, like, you know, just swing the, like, the pendulum in the way of Mars Hill towards the back half of the hill. So, uh, that, that's something that I'm kind of just keeping an eye on. I'm glad that you brought his name into the pot because he's been doing a lot of great things early on here in map one. Uh, Kaylin, nope. Up and towards the top, still trying to be the thorn on the side of LSU. 6 and 14 from Petrov, not an inspiring start. Dwarfland, 7 and 11. Uh, really, a lot of opportunities for them to start going up from here. But the fact that they're only down by about 40 points and the slaying has been as, as one sided as it has been is, you know, something just at least to keep a hold of for the time being. But Mars Hill for this back 15 will be in control of this hill. Of course, as you see Petrov go in from behind, LSU still trying to get themselves in a position to rotate out towards this next hill, but they're just not there yet. One of majority of the time off of P5, one that usually plays scrappier, very uncontested out of LSU, down 50 or so points as we kick off our next set of rotations. A full 60 will put you right back in it, but for the flip side, could really put this game away for the side of the Lions. They're on the hunt now. This P1 break looking to come in. Slowly that time continues to go up for the Mars Hill side of things. What is 50 right now could slowly turn 60, 70. 80, especially if the side of Mars Hill is able to get that P2 Hill swap back and chain linked up once again. Dwarflin starting to make his way up the map. Isn't able to find all that much. Ron and Pavi leaning the way here thus far. I'd love to see Ron and get a little bit more involved when it comes to hill time. Y yes, the KD is there, but it hasn't translated into anything in terms of score. Back half of this 20 seconds could go to LSU here, but Mars Hill once again have found themselves out over towards P2 and in this courtyard. It could prove to be crucial here. Great time could go the way of the opposition. The Tigers need a good break. Setup's going to be clean. Nice line across the map. Mazda gonna cook it down, so that's gonna be an open lane. We'll see how quickly AG can pick it up. The stun's gonna come in. Gonna chow with the Vaznev as they would have snapped for the kill. Gonna also chuck the nade. His teammates are picking up the kills on the front. So for now, coast is clear, good to go. Unfortunate team nade coming in. Push coming in through closed gate, but everyone taking care of business combined. Six kills in a row before you fall. Getting this opening bit of time. A 40-point lead and continuing to grow Mazo. What was a quiet 10 and 9? <sighs> Now, a very exaggerated 20 and 11 with 117 in the hill, having himself a map one to start. And it just continues to keep going up, too. These gunfights towards the front of the hill, winning with the AR. He's dominated the map thus far. LSU has had no answer in their own slaying ability. And yes, they get in towards the hill. It's a nice double 2-2 two -two trade. They get in for a good break. But again, it's just these back half 20, 25 seconds that they're playing tidbits when Mars Hill is just being able to rotate out and get, you know, 40, 50 seconds of time multiple times throughout the game. It's like, yes, the slaying numbers are still kind Kind of there between the two teams. Pavi pops another double on the opposite side of the map, but uh, realistically, you don't have the rotation out. The sponsor's still close for Mars Hill, and all they need to do is win two kills. There's one, Kill and the second. One, and the second. There you go. Suddenly, you're into P3. Oh, I mean, just, uh, just unluckiest of timings there. <laughs> you have to close spawns, but you're going to be close on time for Cod LSU. Uh, three down will give you the clearance you need. You're going to get Mazo in a position to watch. One of the longest lines of sight on this map with that AR calls out that, hey, couple players get across for the cross. All the players are here, so numbers advantage. Oh, no longer. Now that Kalen's playing this heady. And Cod LSU can get no traction, as he said, playing for the back half of time. Mars Hill running away with this one, closing in on the 200-point mark, which they could eclipse, barring any contestion. And, and all the pushes that you saw Cod May or LSU make was through the double doors and in towards this archway over by the over by the statue fountain. So it's like, really, what are you trying to accomplish there? If not just throwing bodies at the opposition, uh, it, 
it, it, it's, it's not recipes for winning hard one. I'm sorry to say it. Pavi down below, going to be able to find one, gets traded out immediately after the fact. 205 to 122. Score continues to go up. Yes, LSU have rotated in towards the bottom of this museum building, uh, but for how long will it last? It was 20 seconds last time. Then Mars Hill were able to break in this time, though. They'll try to at least resurrect something. They can still make something out of a game here. Uh, it's just going to need to be a full 60, essentially locked down and towards the bottom of this hill. The fact that they could still make this a game at a full 60 with two players over double negative is definitely telling of their abilities here in this map. But again, with those lackluster slang performances and the balanced and distributed workload from Mars Hill, you can't think that they really have too much of a chance to battle back into this one. All four players pulling their weight and then some, they get their break once again at about that 30 second mark. This will put them not at the ability to win, but oh. really quite close. I mean, Slapex, eight in a row, looking for potential double digits here towards the end of this map. Number one, you still have Kaylin down below slaying out everybody above 20, almost two players at 30 kills here in map one as well. And a 100 point lead just about to be on the loom. Slapex snaps onto Ron and knocks him off the map, sends him to the respawn block and down below. Petrov's going to be the next one up to challenge. It's going to be good shots there. The pre-fire won't connect for the kill. However, they will weaken and force LSU back yet again to the top ropes. Slapex is there. Pavi to challenge out through the double doors. Can he go for number 11? Right now, the answer is no, and the streak will come to an end on 10 straight. But 100 points is the lead and margin for Mars Hill. LSU in towards the hill, but it's only 10 seconds essentially needed for Mars to win this game. They're going to try to pick and choose where they want to find time. Ronan doing what he can on the 5 3 a streak. Could have helped them at least try to rally something back, but for now, they are winning this P1 time, or excuse me, P5 time behind aggression beyond the zone. Dwarflin, Ronan playing these areas so, so well. Malzo gets a kill and gets out, putting the importance on P1, saying, who cares what time they find here, whether it be a full 60 or not. We need to win this P rotation and look to close this one out. They can still do it here. God, LSU, not going to give it up. Rotation's going to come in. Surely, this should be the closure we were waiting for. LSU might not have enough left here to rally anything else. Yeah, well, I mean, Slapex has been on a tear through the last two hills. Ten consecutive kills before he was chopped down. Now nobody really even pushing here for the side of purple of LSU. The purple and gold have one more opportunity to break back in towards this hill. They're not going to be able to touch and contest Slapex Falls. But as the time eclipses that 250-point mark, Mars Hill will shock everybody with a beautiful opening hard point. They're here to stay. They'll play extremely well. And I feel like this is going to be perhaps the first week we can say a shocking Mars Hill one. I think quickly with how they came out in that first map will make a reputation for themselves as, you know, a team that can come out with some electricity. I mean, you said map one is one where you kind of got to be ready to throw haymakers. I mean, look at these stat lines. I mean, everyone with yeah. at least 24 kills. Usually you see someone with a near 40 bomb. You did. They had about 35. But again, teams with even workload distribution are so, so dangerous because... Sure, you have like one or two players that can pop off. You can tell for LSU that was Ronan. You get Ronan to slow down, and suddenly that productivity is nil, and yeah. all of a sudden you have no threats around the map. When all four players can put up numbers like that on a given map, it's scary because Perfect. there's never anyone you aren't having to slow down. Mazo had a quiet start to a big finish. Slaypex took over with 10 in a row between two hills. AG there for cleanup at times. Kaylin there on the openings. I mean, that's a recipe <laughs> for success if I've ever seen one. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, again, like, you know, the game like stayed relatively close, like, you know, 30, 40 points throughout most of the game. And then it just turned to an 11 when, when Slapex went on that 10 spree. Uh, that was really because LSU, you know, instead of playing for those early rotations, yeah, maybe they get like 10, 15 seconds on an early rotation. Well, then they wouldn't get another 10, 15 seconds until the next hill where they push for like that last bit of scrap time for like 25, 30. So it's it's like, you know, you're, you're picking and choosing your battles along the way if you are the Tigers. But, you know, those battles that you chose to pick it just really didn't net you anything positive except for, you know, maybe a couple kills here and there, maybe a glorified scoreboard. But again, like, even at this point in the game still, you know, we're at 130 to 81. Ronan hadn't dipped his toes into the hill yet. And I think he finished the game with like 15 to 20 seconds. So like, yeah, you can have a really high, or like a high productivity game when it comes to your KD across the board. But if you're not helping to, you know, draw that scoreboard up, get inside and find significant time for your team, it's not going to matter. The opposite, opposite side had, had three different players above a minute by the time this game was over. And uh, that's what we call empty kills. Yeah, exactly. It's like talking and saying a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. it, looks, it looks good on the scoreboard, <laughs> but in the grand scheme of helping your team, again, it's just hard. And, you know, you could look at also the fact that a couple players went 10 and 27 and 16 and 31, but uh, again, they were trying to find hill time right. 
Abby maybe having the most balanced performance respectively with kills and objective time. I mean, I'm not mad at a plus or minus two positive KD if you have at least, you know, 90 seconds or so in the hill. 3k damage as well. But just, I mean, just looking at how balanced Mars Hill was, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed yep. with how they came out and performed. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, real, realistically, uh, you know, there was like two different stories we could have walked away with this from. All right, LSU is looking really good this year, or Mars Hill looks like extremely good for a, an early entry, brand new organization to be stepping its way into, you know, a, a very established collegiate Call of Duty network at this point. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it, it's always difficult when you see new teams coming because you're like, yeah, we don't know a lot about them. We might recognize a few names here and there, but how are they going to do as a full team? You know, one good name doesn't make school all that good doesn't carry them to the top but in this situation there's a full team of four guys who are only going to get better as the season progresses and i think this is at least one hard point we'll see what happens in the search and destroy but at least throughout one map i think a lot of people are going to get put on blast very very quickly to this team and they're going to be like okay we need to take them pretty seriously if we're going to be uh, up against them and especially being down in the southeast where a lot of teams are very very competitive inside of this division yeah. one matchup it's not going to be easy pickings against this Mars Hill roster. I'll tell you that from the very beginning here, right off the jump. So, not at all. And <laughs> I, 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 that hard point wasn't a fluke. It's not like it was a 250 grueler one. We've seen we've seen games already this season where it looks like two teams are trying to lose. That was one where uh, again that was a very well played opening fortress hard point. And you see score lines like that with teams who know what to do. You have to find a way to make sense of chaos away the decisions of rotations and the scheme of the product or the like how the game is going to continue to project and mm. not not to you know use too many big words in sequence about a cod map but hey you know <laughs> we did and uh mars hill you got me to say that sequence of words about my least favorite map of the game so That's good fair. on you again color color me impressed but we go to hotel where whew, i mean yeah you can check out anytime you like but oh, we're not leaving sure. anytime soon and uh yeah Sure, they have the opportunity to close it out in three. The S and D, like you said, though, it could be a showing of. Right, we've already said we're impressed with this Mars Hill squad coming in, making a good statement in map one. Is the S and D sound? If the S and D is sound, ooh. Well, I guess I'm we'll have to feeling, see. I'm not feeling too good. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm again, I'm a Mars Hill fan, but. Well, absolutely, and, and and again, like you know, one thing I will say about this LSU team that that I have experienced from from a firsthand perspective, um, you know, hard point at times where struggles, respawns were a struggle at times. Control is where they kind of teed up a lot. Um, for whatever reason, they had a lot of really solid ground that they were able to cover when they when they were playing that mode specifically. But the Search and Destroy also wasn't bad either. Um, and again, Search and Destroy more so than a respawn where everybody has to be interconnected. You know, you can have one person have a big spotlight or have, you know, maybe maybe you feel like they're empty kills in a hard point, but you go into a Search and Destroy and those kills actually matter a bit more. Because um, 15 kills on the scoreboard in S&D, no matter where it is, is going to look really good. Obviously, one person's not going to be able to carry you throughout an entire S&D, but a couple rounds here and there where things are going shaky down to the wire in a game, or, you know, a, a, a round 11 type situation, yeah, you're going to be absolutely happy that somebody just dropped you 10, 12 kills or something like that. So I'm not necessarily saying that that's going to happen for LSU uh, or that they should be counting on that, but, you know, at least there is opportunities for individualism to kind of sh shine and reign supreme and search and destroy where mm -hmm. a lot of the other times it just simply can't because you're not winning gunfights around the rest of the map. But yeah. other than that, I mean, we're double dutch dutching with, uh, with Hotel for these next two guaranteed maps. Um, but from what I've seen throughout the series so far, I, uh, I think Mars Hill have, have what it takes here in map, in map two. I think so as well. Again, when you can make sense of a chaotic map like Fortress, you go to one that as we keep gassing Hotel, the more fundamentally, the most <laughs> fundamentally sound map we have here in yep. the map pool, we get three doses of that. I can't see them faltering too, too bad. Um, barring an LSU drastic change, it'd have to be a 180 from what that hard point sure. showed us, where uh, again, sure, you have that one player takeover ability that, that could threaten with again, Ronan kind of being the one laying out in that, but it's going to have to be more coordinated. One player can't take down a squad of four who is distributing the load the way that Marcel did in map number one. We will find out, yep. though. We've speculated enough. We've taken our guesses and ganders. Now let's see how things shape out. First Blood going to go the way of Mazo. Traded out quickly by LSU Cod. Pavi with a sniper. Seeing what he can connect with. Ants are going to be nothing. Mm. And already into a 2v3 on offense. Cod LSU, what do you got? And it's like, you know, the door is open. You don't want to challenge out directly, like across the map. Wow, that's actually a beautiful tag up there by Ronan to get the hood Kalen, who was flying away from the hill all the way back and off. But AG is going to go ahead and chase down that player from Louisiana State and now challenge back over towards Petrov, who's behind the bar with that tack and Nan. 
Challenge back over towards the right. Mazza will be there and waiting. Mars Hill, beautiful round to open things up. But I want to finish what I was saying. Like, when you have that sniper there and, and you're trying to get away from, like, stuns and everything like that, you can't just, like, blindly challenge over towards the right side and, like, just think that you're going to walk away with a kill there. It just, it just didn't make any sense to me why he just wide swung like that and then just mm -hmm. played with the sniper in, in just an erroneous way. Yeah, your whole, your whole point is just to play the cover and get a pick. Absolutely. Maybe we see it this round, maybe we don't. But it's gotta be smarter if that's gonna be the case. Now on offense, Mars Hill. Gonna do what they can to, well, scoop the bomb. See what side they prefer to go to. I'm gonna say it's leaning A, but we'll see what they can find, especially if there's a sniper looming on the other side. For now, decent site control, but these next few kills are gonna be important. Last time, Pabby. With the sniper in hand, we'll have it pay off for him. Kalen down below, waiting. Could fly up this ladder in just a moment. Pabby with the sniper is there. Kalen will open the back door, start to make his way out towards the spawn side of this LSU roster. Another snipe there from the top, takes him off. That was so dangerous head glitch. Now it's Kalen left alive in a one versus four. He snuck through the back line, but he didn't make anything of it. Bombs down. Probably going to try to pop Deddy to make a play. It just might be too much. I'd almost try to hold on to the dead silence and wait for a more manageable round. 35 seconds and ticking at this point. And for Kyle LSU, uh, again, a good defensive response for them behind the, the smart sniper Shots. play. But, hey, on the first one, can he get another 1v1 isolated? Yeah, he can, but unfortunately not going to get the better angle on it. Mm -hmm. We're drawing up here one. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say like you know maybe if you get that second kill on the player on the catwalk, then I was like okay, well now maybe I pop the dead silence and start making a play. But if if you can't get that second kill and you're still in a one before, um, absolutely keep that. And we saw a situation where it didn't pay off earlier, where somebody you know popped it in like a one v three and they just like died to the first gunfight and then didn't have it for the next round. But uh, Galen uses the smarts there, veteran ship when it comes to search and destroy. I'd at least assume saves it for a round where it's going to be a little bit more necessary on an opening break. Like that he played towards the bottom of that A site that time, just wasn't able to make anything of it before his teammates eventually fell across the board. Nay gonna be out by Ronin. Trophy system down over towards the A site. Bomb gonna go down extremely quickly uh, with really no contention for Mars Hill yet. Yeah, Pabby ever looking the sniper, so that's gonna really rule this AR player out. Now you gotta get up close and personal. Mazza will connect for one, not before first blood rings in for the Tigers. A 3v3 here. Working through mid map as everyone's readjusting for Cod LSU. So far, a good round and clock only working against you. And see, now you just fly. If, if you go over towards this A zone, you just fly straight up it because you know the last two are going to be playing off site. And as Pavi and Petro both fall, that's exactly what they do. That is beautiful right there for Mars Hill. They get the information that, okay, we have two dead on the site. We know the last two aren't going to be holding the head glitches here. We can just push this out. And then the last person for middle map can just be that like, that lingering player that just cleans up an, like a frag. Or if they need to trade, they can go ahead and get it immediately. You know, one guy's got a sniper out. And he's only going to be running around challenging with, with a pistol. And, and Petrov has been playing basically the same spot on both defensive rounds rounds or excuse me off offensive rounds so you know where those last two players are going to be you cut those down immediately boom pretty stuff from mars hill that just goes to show me that they understand the game from a fundamental perspective yeah just because it's their first year in the ccl doesn't mean they don't have reps elsewhere and uh, again we can confidently say that is the case here they understand what's going on and, and what they want to do around the map maybe just the first year their university was able to have a team and they're a part of it and now on full display two for one Goes the opening exchange in favor of Mars Hill once again. Offensively trying to get control of mid-map a little bit more. Slapex unable to finish the kill there, so it's going to be a 2v2. You're going to commit to this plant on the A site, hopefully before God SU get word or wind of it. And now as this bomb goes down, it'll be a 2v2. What post-plant setup can you make? Abby with the sniper. Hello, Mazo. Doesn't get the connection. Forces it all the way back off. Mazo through the wall is going to be able to bang things up. Knocked down Pabby from being able to be potential in the last part of this round. Ronin doesn't check over towards the left behind the bar. And you gotta be able to get through the, or excuse me, the entrance to the lobby. If you want to get into the bar area, you're not able to even find that first player. I, I don't know why he was just checking over towards the bar. I just didn't even look towards his left. It feels like it's almost a guarantee someone playing it. Check in, but doesn't check it now. 3-1. Early score being run up. Kalen with some good kills. Mazo had a good round there. And again, everyone playing well for Mars Hill through this first half of the S&D. Petrov waiting to get on the board. And some slower starts for some other players. But 
need to bounce back here sooner than later to this Mars Hill team. We've seen them blow up score lines and run things up already through map one. And there's a gimme for Petrov there. Quick on the trade. Ooh, I thought nice. it is able to get out with his life. So big heads up play. Yeah. Slight effects chases it down. Oh, it's, it's like they're chasing red dots, but it's just to such effectiveness because they've realized that nobody is there for immediate trades for, for LSU. The Tigers have not been able to find an effective way and means to be able to double back onto Mars Hill. So like every time they find one person just off by themselves, especially on like a, like a non-favored site, they know that they can just like fly it down and be able to walk away with a kill. So it's great. Kill there on the Dwarf is going to walk away with one, two versus two. Now it's Mazo on the bomb. He gets Pabby down, but it is 45 seconds in the restrictive timer that comes through. Ron and last alive to one versus is two. At least he can say confidently before everybody fell, they got the bomb down. Has a great angle on this bomb, so if they give him two 1v1s, I mean, he has the potential to pull this off very much so. If they double up and chow out of this, uh, they stand a chance, and I feel like that's about their best chance, but as long as he keeps checking bomb here, mm -hmm. yeah, this could very much be a round one. When Slapex didn't spot out Ronin, so they have no idea where he's playing from. He has played this perfectly. And with 13 seconds left, he can play the time to perfection. All he has to do is sneak around the corner. Mazo on the bomb. He's going to walk away with it. Ron in a beautiful, and I mean beautifully played search and destroy round there. The last one will be on the bomb. Slapex will fall to the hands of Ronin as well. LSU get their second round here in the search and destroy. And it's off the back end of Ronin just playing a very smart, tight-knit S&D round. Great angle from where the bomb plant was. Beautiful position he could play in the post plant and the clutch. Felt like a gimme with just the angle and like you said, the tightness with which he could play that angle. So, so good. They had no clue where he was. Great bounce back around there. Ron and already up to 6-3. and three. Back to defense for LSU this time. I would love to see the sniper not be used here by Pavi. Maybe go to something else. That would be nice. Regardless of the fact, uh, I, I just want to see them play with a bit more aggression here on defense. Uh, like the passive play has allowed Mars Hill to get good in routes over towards the A bomb so far. And if they're able to go ahead and shut that down, well, maybe things turn around just a bit. Either way, AG is going to fly after Kalen down towards the bottom of the building. Inside of the hotel room, Dwarfen will be the first one to fall. Four versus three. Kalen with dead silence will get around up and towards the top of the building. Maybe a call out there from COD LSU. Either way, into the back line. Kalen might be able to make some trouble. Mm. Get sniffed out. Top bedroom remains safe. And this pinch quickly developing by Pavi with the sniper, so we'll see what comes of it. Could get some good timing with his longer line of sight. That could connect, Ooh. possibly. But Mazo connects with one, too, so... What was a 3v3? Very quickly, a 3v1. <laughs> Petrov. One kill on the board, three ahead of him to try to make something happen. Position given up. This feels like... I mean, barring some heroics... Marcel huh. should have this one. You know exactly where he's going to come from, too. Petrov can just slowly work his way up, but he just needs to be able to find at least one isolated one-on-one -on -one gunfight. And this could come from the player that's behind him right now in player number seven, that's AG. And towards the top, he climbs the ladder. Yeah, I mean, his fists are out. He can't do anything against that. He is defenseless. Gets shut down, shot off the ladder. Four to two, another buffer round in between. But I was going to, I thought, you know, when you were like, you know, like, what is, the, like, I, I thought you were going to be talking about uh, Pavi, who was trying to make a flank with a sniper. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't necessarily love that play. I don't know if I'm the only one that believes in that. Um, hmm. But I just don't think that the the sniper should be the one making the flank play all no. the way around the back, no. uh, especially when it hasn't worked out at all on offense. And there you go, supposed to that. Let's go. There we go. Hey, heard you. Yeah, the, 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 definitely a questionable play coming in, and we've kind of said that a couple times already about LSU in regards to uh, you know some of the play calls being made. Either way, they still find themselves in this one, of course. And defensively, no one giving looks towards B, but perhaps some one v ones coming in. Ag. Playing aggro, Kalen able to find a kill on the opposite side of the map. Now 4v2, quickly turn 3v2, Pavi getting mixy in top bed. Slapex ah. should be able to connect for that kill and does. Now a 3v1 once again, the bomb down, I mean bottom bedroom, it's clinical from Mars Hill. Oh, I mean, Ronan's icy, I, I, I mean, he's got 50 seconds to work around with here. You, you've got player number 8 and Mazo all the way back in towards that little, like, like inlet route from from the bottom of the garage but you know if you're able to walk away with that kill great but he's got a sniper in his hands now anyway so it doesn't really matter if you want to challenge that you just have to find a way to isolate a one-on-one -on -one gunfight and there's really nobody around you for you to be able to do that except for the middle of the map here you snuck your way through you got a trophy system no dead silence to work with this is like the hardest situation to walk away from absolutely is again it was 50 seconds blood down to 20 before you see anyone but they see you first 
Now you're trapped without bomb in hand. Flapex gonna fly at you with a knife. Snap's good for another, but uh, again, 2-2 two, two aware. Kaylin gonna get out of dodge. No time left to plan. You get the round win and put yourself at map point here. <laughs> Slow search and destroy. It's been... But, I mean, at least in that last run, I did see, you know, the, the adjustment coming out from LSU saying, okay, Babby, let's put the sniper away. He got out, he got aggressive, and he got a kill. At least was able to walk away with one on the AG up in top bedroom. And, you know, you you when you get a kill like that with the Vaznev, it can start to turn things around. But, I mean, like, overall, like, yes, that last kill, you know, to put him at eight doesn't really help all that much in terms of overall performance. But, you know, seven and four going into that round, like, nobody else really being able to step up to the plate and help out Ronan in this regard. It's, it's difficult to really gauge this LSU team because uh, of just the lackluster play that we've seen but they they're they're not playing together they're not trying to push it like anything and there's no trades being made whatsoever so mm -hmm. that's really the thing they have to look for tour opens up kaylin is able to walk away with yet another first blood mars hill three more kills away from taking the search and destroy and putting themselves up 2-0 and they're gonna bully out this back door to kill whoever was left here well, at least i thought damage gonna be dealt Ooh, both teams just through the door trying to make it work you're all going to be in the back. Pavi's going to connect for one. He if hit fire for a second, I, I would have <laughs> ripped my headset off, actually. I, oof. I'm, glad. I'm glad he didn't for now, but we've got ourselves around. AG last alive, a 1v1 now. Going to pick up the sniper, and he's got a little phase five up his sleeve. No. <laughs> that drop comes through with the ice though in the one versus one good round for lsu keeps their search and destroy alive uh, I, I guess good to note out uh you know again it's not how you start it's how you finish uh was one in six before that round of search and destroy was able to walk away with two for himself in that round so the third round on the board for the louisiana state tigers is going to be at least good to extend the search and destroy another round uh, of course needing two more to at least tie the game three to win it um, and that's, of course, all before Mars Hill can get themselves another round on the board. So it seems like an impossible task, a very tall order at that. Uh, but if everybody can start to uh, kind of come together, combine for uh, what is going to be, I, I guess, cohesion uh, in this team for the first time in the search and destroy, uh, it's going to have to start here on offense. And I would, uh, again, just hope that Pabby doesn't have the sniper out. You need to get a little something going in the way of aggression. I agree. And oof. There we go. You've made your bed. What can you find? I mean, again, if you can get productivity out of it, great. It just hasn't been as consistent as you would have liked from one. There we go. Hey, you connect for a couple, though. This is what we're talking about. Caitlin's able to trade one back and get out with his life. Ooh, that nade were to connect. That'd be so, so crazy. Either way, you get out of dodge. A 3v2. But with Caitlin and AG, man, I mean, anything's possible. Are they reading Petrov and where he's playing? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your answer. Bomb goes down. Caitlin lasts a lot, but a one versus three. With that sniper over on the staircase, he saw the glint just a bit. Pavi not going to know where Kalen is necessarily, but he can peek around the corner here in just a moment. Uh, really, no matter where Kalen peeks out from, there should be somebody to go ahead and get eyes on him. And from behind, you see player number four could snap around, maybe get some good timing and get behind the bomb. Either way, LSU, two straight rounds. Now one round away from tying things, forcing up around 11 in map number one. Uh, it didn't look like it was going to be this way at the beginning of the search and destroy, but as things have continued to evolve forward, so have the LSU strategy and their game plan. Tavi, albeit I, I might not personally love the move, he does get utility out with a sniper in that last round, so at least there's something. Two rounds away. I'm responding back in what really has been all Mars Hills. Mars Hill so far the series. But again, good adjustments being made. Like you said, you're finding good productivity out of the sniper still. Offensive attempt, they're gonna waste no time getting over to this A site. You gotta open up with the first blood here to get things going your way. That is gonna be the case. Pavi connects once huh. again with a sniper at range. Thrown in top bedroom. Again, they're gonna fly at this to clear it out. I like this call from Mars Hills. Gonna back Pavi all the way down. Can you continue to find more as Caitlyn connects for a second? I mean, look, I'm not I'm not gonna be mad if he proves me wrong with this sniper. And he has like like round after round throughout the last like three rounds. So like, you know what? I, I, I made enough to admit that I, I made a mistake. My bad, man. Petrov on the cross though. AG on the bomb. Pavi in from behind. Oh, this could be spoiler. Jumps up. I thought maybe he was going to put himself in a bad position to go ahead and get that away. But as he walks back around through with a pistol in the spawn line, as Petrov last alive, was one in six at one point since that. He's gotten three straight. Has to be the clutch factor. The deciding man here, whether we'll go to a round 11 or Mars Hill, will find themselves with a 2-0 advantage this. in this best of five series. Love this B wrap. So heads up. You're going to get eyes on it, but I don't know that Petrov's going to wrap straight over to B. Still, maybe going to hang out for just long enough for them to get this bomb down. 
Here it goes, the B line, straight into the B site. I like this play. If he can get the timing, it can go well, but he still has to clear out just enough that Mars Hill will get this plant off. Ideas in the right place. They won't know where he's going to be pushing from. Mazo, Kalen. No dead go silence, up 2 though. He doesn't have dead silence to work with. As he comes with the back line, he has to go slowly. He has to be crouch walking. He has to be playing this passive, and they both know where he's going to be coming from here in just a moment. Mazo's going to be the one up for a challenge onto the gunfight. Petrov can't jump around the corner. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you don't have the dead silence there, but I would have loved to jump challenge around the corner, regardless of the fact that a 6 4 search and destroy victory gives them the advantage in the series yet again. Close things out on a control. We'll stay on hotel for map three anyway, so no change of scenery to clear the heads of the LSU boys. An adjustment made there in the late game for Mars Hill just to get quick and aggressive over towards A. They don't get the setup they like. Goes to a 2v2 to a 2v1, but they make this yep. they make the mid-round adjustment again to go over to B. So it just really heads up and aware plays coming into Mars Hill to know what they need to do to win. Set the win condition for themselves, close it out the last round. And we find ourselves staring down the barrel of, well, I can't say this is our first 3-0 potential of the night because we've already seen a reverse sweep come in. Sure. So uh, not over till it's over, but... Mars Hill definitely, these first two maps have been more handed um, than what we've seen all night. I don't think it's bad to necessarily say that, you know, Mars Hill has been the better team through two maps. I, th I think that's just what you would have to say in this situation because they have been. Um, and, it, and it's not putting a negative light on LSU either in this situation. There have been some great plays. I mean, you see the run and run back there, the one versus two where he's able to play time to perfection. That was great for them. But again, it was it was kind of like the Akron thing where like we saw a lot of glimpses of really spectacular things from a few players. It's how do you put that together throughout an entire map, but uh, much less an entire series. Um, and obviously, Obviously, Akron proved that. They were able to come back in a 3-0 sweep, uh, or excuse me, a 3-0 comeback or a reverse sweep uh, against the previous Brock Mendes roster. Um, <clears throat> yeah, LSU has to do this against Mars Hill. Um, but again, they, they just look super, super stout. They haven't, you know, given up a lot of, of like weird rounds. There hasn't been moments where I'm like, oh, Mars Hill just made a really bad play there. It, it just seems calm, cool, and collected. And it seems like they just understand fundamentally what they need to do each and every map. Um, and, and so after the search and destroy and that map one hard point, uh, it, it's really difficult for me to go against them in a control. But again, at the same time, top of the broadcast, it did say, you know, Hey, LSU are good at control. That was what, like one of the modes where they just turn things around in the series. So mm -hmm. a start to reverse sweep could be on the loom. It absolutely could be. I really like that you hit on the point for how calm and collected Mars Hill look because exactly what I was going to say was that, you know, they're a team that isn't going to deviate from the beaten path unless you make them. LSU have yet to force their hand hard enough to make them change up uh, how they're playing. They've controlled the tempo and pacing the whole time, though LSU have made their attempts to rally and maybe come back here through the first couple of maps. Not enough to deter Mars Hill from what their game plan is coming into it. So when you have a team with, you know, the unwavering decisiveness that Mars Hill has come in with, Kalen, of course, boasting a 13 and 7. Um, and again, the rest of his team dropping at least six kills. Definitely something to also make note of just the distribution of workload with the pop-off potential <laughs> Kalen brings uh, like I was saying when, when you don't waver you don't falter when things get a little close a little dicey I, I think this team's playing mature beyond their years from we've seen and because it's the first night we've seen them I think we can say this but like I said even at the top of the show for the series and after map one I don't think we'll be able to say this for long for some reason <laughs> I've got a feeling about this Mars Hills team that you know they're going to be able to string stuff together and their trajectory will be upward for a little while yeah, I, I think they're going to have a big impact uh, impact on the the end of the year, um, and I think we're starting to see kind of like a Simba story where the young bucks on campus really starting to make their way forward. And at the end of the year, you know, we could be saying, "Hey, these guys might be in con in contention for you know being in that top eight uh, and and maybe playing for a championship." So uh, on the backside of a break, we'll go to hotel for one more potential map in this series. LSU have their backs against the wall. The Tigers can have to main their way out of it if they want a chance in this best of five series. We'll see you in just a bit. Don't go anywhere. With an opportunity to close out this best of five series in the third map, a 3 0 sweep for Mars Hill on the loom. LSU looks to rebound, start a reverse sweep here in the control, and potentially force this to at least a map number four in another hard point. But at least throughout the series so far, uh, it hasn't looked like anything other than Mars Hill's execution of this Tigers roster. 250, 164 in map one, that 6 4 score line. It's close, uh, albeit there were a few situations where I feel like uh, that Mars Hill roster could have maybe. Uh, had a couple 
maybe steps in the right direction that they could have took and maybe it wasn't going to be as close of a certain story regardless of the fact that they still won those four rounds uh, and that should give them some decent momentum going into this control lsu has looked good uh, multiple times in the past on control whether it be in vanguard cold war i uh, mean you give them the opportunity to take the map they'll probably take it uh, but this mars hill roster they will clean cut well executed and they look really really strong together on the map and that is the perfect recipe to take down a team in a control LSU needs to be very careful or they're going to have themselves spoiled in an 0-3 sweep. Most definitely is. We were kind of talking on the break that Mars Hill just looks like they're just trusting each other's playmaking ability around the map. Um, that search and destroy was very telling of it, right? Fortress can be so crazy that it's hard to see kind of individual moments where your team might be going out on a limb and trusting you, but uh, the way they trust AG or Caitlyn, they get aggressive in the mid-map to try to find an opening pick is definitely telling of you trust your player's gunny and their ability, and that's something that shows that whether it be through repetitions, whether it be through just any kind of prior experience together, it's something that this Mars Hill team is able to bring to this universe and again bode for such a good first night for them thus far like i said it's not over yet unless you have one final chance to respond perhaps they're as sure. you said best mode um in that regard but if mars will find a way to close this out in three i mean something a little more than ripples are going to be sent to the ccl at least for this division one as well yeah um i mean it's 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 an interesting division, right? <laughs> like yeah. top to bottom shaking down, like, you know, it's not the 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 most competitive division um out of all of them. Um but it's it, it, again, it's not to say that it's gonna be like a cakewalk through it. So uh, regardless of the fact though, hotel control, LSU not having the greatest two first games and Marcio looking really strong. This is a map that you can get turned around very quickly on if you're not careful, especially on the defensive side, because if you allow a team to ping pong back and forth or just get one really good solid break onto a zone, you're pretty much screwed no matter what you look at it, because once you once you break into something, it's very seldom you see a team be able to break you back out of it. Absolutely. This is where LSU need to find a way to thrive, but it's got to be all four players. Can't be indiv individualistic, especially with the way Mars Hill is playing as cohesive as they are. Off this break, going to be very telling no of the way. Mars Hill game plan, and they are already up and in through mid map for free. Find the first blood to trade it out. A couple players already here with top bed control. I mean, simply put, that just can't happen. It, it, that that was exactly what High Point was doing in the search and destroy against Mox Cod, and you you, you know you let your SMG to run directly down the middle, no contention on the defensive side, and all of a sudden you've got a multiple two, or multitude of players over at this B zone trying to go ahead and get multiple ticks of progress. AG snaps back down below, Ron in there for a trade. Now you have player number two in Mazo making his way back over towards this A zone. One-on-one -on -one gunfight off screen, gonna go the way of Pavi on the Mazo this time through, but it's Kalen who's back over at this B zone trying to do his best job to hold the fort down by himself and maybe earn himself an extra tick of progress in the process. Mazo, Kalen, all good kill feeds for the white team now of Mars Hill East sports that second ticket progress at b not going to come through but over at a they've done a great job of getting that second one on already one tick going over two minutes will be left with a life advantage offensively so and not a perfect break but uh, again more than good enough for mars hill here to start things off now what do they want to look to try to push through you know top bedroom controls oh so important that's why you see all the tiger players stacked up in here putting extra emphasis on this knowing as they get to the back lines they're not going to have an easy route to the point spread coming in out of Mars Hill's players slowly but surely working their way across finding these kills Mazo opens up with the first and now they're starting to collapse I'm just gonna wait here doesn't realize there's a player up and towards the top of him as Kalen gets the trade there on to Ronin Orphan will just play here and towards the corner of the bar Will they check this immediately out towards the bottom? The answer is no. Kalen gets spotted on the cross, cut down by Dwarflin. Three kills in the game here for him thus far, but LSU still holding on strong over towards this B zone for the time being. Slapex going to be able to find one, but it's AG in the top that gets shut down. Technical trades back and forth, and a pinstripe kill feed is going to allow Mazo to take a shot on Pavi. Snap techs up and towards the top, not going to be able to walk away with a kill, but gets himself pushed up on towards this B zone. 18 to 14. Four life advantage. Defense still here, holding on strong with a minute left in the round. Mars Hill have gotten a full four-man push, kind of been stopped at a couple different fronts, but this might be the look. There's a couple going down. Pavi able to at least trade one out, but you're going to stop this clock with Slapex looking over you. Petrov, though, down below, and you're not going to be aware of it. Ah. Still doesn't matter. Slapex finds the kill. Now you can start to collapse on the site. Now these players frantically have to scramble for LSU. Second tick should be coming in soon. The mid-map push is through as well. 
what damage can you do before they get back? I mean, you're just guns down sprinting off a of spawn right now if you are the Tigers and you're trying to get back over towards a point. Kaylin's still going to be up and towards the top of it. Nobody here in terms of the purple arrows. LSU not going to be able to take advantage of their defensive sign on the first round. That A zone and that first stick of progress that'd be just too early in the round. A good four down break from Mars Hill. Sets them up for a nice round win. 1-0 up in the control. Life advantage. All ticks secured. Really about as good of an opening you would have liked to see and as you said lsu don't take advantage of their defensive hold to start we'll see what they can do offensively here it really took marcel working things down though it wasn't a quick transition over to b to get the break but they really took the time and worked it i mean kaylin already out to eight three six and three from two other players i just the productivity out of these guys is unreal in these respawns Two split here on the defensive side. LSU try to go straight up through the middle of the map, just like Mars Hill did the last time through. And what do they get? A big fat face of guns getting absolutely dropped off the map early on. Over towards the kitchen. That's where the spawn's going to come in from. Mazo going to be able to find one. It's a team kill that shuts down a second. 30 to 24. Six lives taken off immediately after the fact. And it's Slapex who's there for a nice little flanky through. Mazo shots over towards the top. And, and really, this is just a flawless execution of a round thus far. Oh. Mars Hill have not lost a live yet. 10 all already off the board for LSU. And you're all just spawning in kitchen because Kaylin's influencing the spawn parking garage. You have to get your way out of here, but at every turn, it's, uh, well, as you set a firing squad waiting to cut you down, send you back to the respawn block. No push going to be free. The clap's going to come in once again because why not? You've only lost two lives. You might as well throw a couple more at it see if you can stop this A push. Believe a little more of this clock. A good push out out of the cod LSU. A couple players here to push things out, but again with Kalen and Kitchen on a force free as well. What can he do here? One more for the street. Can he get the timing? Answer going to be no. I thought for a minute he would have had that. Almost two ticks progress earned at LSU. I mean, for the snowball that was the first 10 kills off the board for LSU, they've been able to strike back. Only been three lives lost on their side to the Ooh. seven now that Mars Hill have lost. Dwarflin will fall in the back line, so it's still a seven life advantage that Mars Hill has on the defensive side. But uh, again, like we saw on that first offensive hit from Mars Hill, LSU could probably do the same thing here if they get a nice little four down. Two for Pavi. He's going to start that off with a beautiful kickstart. That catalyst to get in towards B has been met. However, there's still LSU players all the way across on the other side of the map, and with have he got there really amounted to nothing because he had none of his teammates there for help. That's exactly what I was going to say. You just, I get you want to try to get as much progress earned as you can, but maybe just to play your map positioning more so than playing the point would have been more beneficial in that moment. Either way, your teammates trying to get up, trying to get bedroom control. We're only going to chase around for this kill and connect for it. But now for Mars Hill, holding shape. Pod LCU waiting for the group up from the teammates, and this is going to be the first coordinated team push at the be site. I've been towards the top of the bedroom. Mazo's going to find the first one on the Petrovinator. Knocks two players down off of LSU. Pavi, nice little trade back. Halen going to be down for the chase, but it's Dwarflin in the middle of the map that cuts down Mazo and now can start to make this push back over towards this B zone. Everybody down from Mars Hill. Back to the respawn block. Here they go. Stacking on the site. Three players on now trying to make it a fourth. First tick of progress. Going to come through. One coordinated hit is all it takes to shut them off, but it's Dwarflin who picks up that first kill. They have to go now. They need to find their way into the zone, but it's Slapex with a streak over the top that's going to shut that down, but the Terminator is still there. He picks up two with the help of his teammate and Kyle. LSU will get in towards that zone. Both offenses won by either of these two teams respectively off the rip here on this hotel control. And that's a streak that gets invested by Slapex, which could be costly later on in the game. It was a good streak investment. You found two. It just it sucks that the other two players after they had been cut down were weak. And uh, again, an easy lineup for Petrov there. Weak damaged, found good kills and two of his Three kills were in that closing moment. So, I mean, if there's any better time to find a couple on the board, it'd be there to get your offensive win around the Mars Hill field. They probably should have had, but LSU clutch up anyway and draw this up 1 1. Massa will jump around the corner, turns around. Pavi gets unfortunate timing. And towards why there's another player there for LSU. Kalen starts to make his way over towards the speed point. First bit of progress going to start to make its way to completion. The reinforcements start to get over towards the zone. Here comes the stack. First bit in. LSU trying to make their way back over towards the point. The kill that they get is across the map, though. Not on this B zone, so it has no influence just yet. Dwarflin down the staircase. Slapex wins the one versus one, but that allows Pavi to get in position for a nice little trade there. They're not able to get the second tick of progress all the way through. They're going to go ahead and drain this back down to about a tick. A minute left in the round here as those white arrows of Mars Hill back towards the north portion of the map. They'll get themselves on A. 
quick stack coming in. LSU still with enough presence here to push some lives added. A couple kills gonna come in, that's going to be good, but the nade gonna connect. That Dwarfland down, where's the next kill coming from? Slapex not able to connect with it. You're gonna keep draining that progress. No ticks earned at A just yet. AG, what can you do? You know there's a player here. You end up getting the kill and getting the trophy out. You need to keep earning progress, but LSU keep pouring on the pressure. You're just not sure where they're coming from. You're trying to fight a war on two fronts just to split the defense as well, but unfortunately, you're not earning significant progress on either side just yet. If you're the Tigers right now, you're extremely happy with how this defense is starting to go for yourselves right now. You know, you're about even on the wise right now. Yes, you go down by two, but you, you know, you've at least restricted a progress decently far. Yes, you're, you have two ticks over at B, and that's going to potentially be costly later down the line. But, I mean, for the, the early portions of the round, it was looking pretty good for yourselves. All you need to do is just, again, keep your foot on the gas and continue that slaying forward up the map, not, in, not in allowing... Me, not allowing them to get any sort of pressure over towards the A or the B building. It's been a long night. Yeah, something like that. I'm, I'm up well past my bedtime at this point, but Carlos, you here, as you were saying, making a stout hold, a minute and a half to work with over Mars Hill, and still a life advantage. We know that even with a disadvantage, LSU can still make a stand. Lead out a couple of these kills, and you'll be sitting pretty well. Caitlyn's going to open things up. The rest of his team, though, not quite in position if someone gets traded out. AG still trying to make things happen for this pressed-up player. You're trying to find any more kills. Slapex find one, and that's going to be the clearance. All these arrows going to start flying, coming off the respawn block. Can't any chop these players off holding free aims. And you know if you're Caitlyn, how far you force them back into the spawn set. Now you can start making this push back across the map. Petrov wasn't able to find anything, but spawned him one on the cross. Ronin was there, but gets traded out immediately. Two players now three stacking the point. LSU isn't able to touch in time. Mars Hill, two to one. Offense, three straight rounds have won it. And now they go up with the situation. You can close out this series with a three to one win of the control. 3-0 sweep. A 1-0 start to the CCL season. LSU, what do you have left offensively? You guys are going to assess their first go. Was an impressive one at that, but uh, I mean, again, the slow performance out of Petrov, really doing nothing at this point but hindering your, your ability to find more success than what you've already found here in the control. If things can turn around, surely LSU will be sitting in a much better position, but they've got to win this round if they want to stay alive. It's got to be a well-executed offense. Mars Hill, not going to let them have it easy. And it's the same exact look that they had on defense the last time through. They did a 2-2 split where they just took every lane of the map that they possibly could, one one-on-one -on -one gunfights there, and then were able to start making their way up the map and trying to force the offense into a basic spawn trap. Now they have him stuck in the middle of the map, putting him in the blender. AG can just hold on to this angle. Yes, you have one down below. You snap to him. On and towards the top. Gets cut down by Kalen, and everybody just falls across the entirety of the map. That's beautiful for Mars Hill. These defenses have just been so good from both teams to start things off, but you really just have to kind of sit back and admire what they've done. LSU's still out of it yet. It's not as damaging of an opening break that uh, the last go-round was. LSU... At least able to trade out a little bit better. Still 26 to 20 here. As no site control is given just yet. Uh, again, you already have a position, player in position at parking garage. It's going to keep them spawning kitchen. You're going to keep doing lives with this as long as you can. 25 seconds left. I mean, surely with a wave or two more of kills, this one could be done and dusted. Unless else, you can hold on here and find some good kills to hold them off. Yeah, I didn't love that ultra-aggressive play there from Slaybex just to try and find one before he gets cut down. You need to wait for your teammates to get in position, and then you can really just collapse on that zone. This actually allows LSU to get the entirety of the A site completely, or completely captured. And with a 5-life advantage and still a minute and 20 seconds, again, the last time all it took was LSU to get one good wipe down. It's been the same thing every time that we've gone over towards that B site. You just have to shut it down. Yes, another streak potentially on the loom here from AG as he's at five in a row. Slapex almost snaps to a second. But before that streak can get earned, he gets cut down by running across the map. And now for Mars Hill, nothing in the back pocket. Pavi on this B zone and LSU starting to make their way up the map. Uh, just making a beeline for the zone and Petrov's going to connect with another. They're just going to try to stack it. A couple kills going to come in, make that all three. So suddenly nothing going to come of it. Pavi's still alive here, yet to be traded out. Slapex. Able to finally clean up that kill. 60 seconds left. Six life advantage. Lives could come into effect here if they play a little bit of TDM. Slapex going to try to line up a couple. Unable to. But look at how far beyond the 50-yard line they're pressing. Look at how they're playing in top bed. LSU need to make something happen. Otherwise, they're going to look up and start to see that red blinking time. Oh, no. Oh, I've seen it many times beforehand. A good spawn trap completely shutting down around. If you look to Mazo, yes, he gets cut down by Dwarflin. 
This is going to open up a backline flank through the spawn side. You can get the middle of the map kind of controlled here as well, but the close spawn for Marcel back over towards B is going to force a four versus four direct gunfight here from LSU. They're going to have to fight a war on two fronts. You learned in history class, it's probably not a good idea to do that, but they've got the first two kills going their way. Two, two trade back and forth. Now make it three to two. Dorflin trying to snap back in towards the top of the bedroom. Needs to get in towards the zone, but can't get in towards the point just fast enough. Petrov still playing here in towards the hotel lobby, waiting for his teammates to get back out onto the point, but they've stalled the time for now, but it's Pavi who falls, Petrov falls, everybody from LSU now across the map, Dorflin just has to sprint back on over, Kalen can go into it and knows that he can't get the kill, it is Mars Hill that will go ahead and afford themselves a third round here in the control, take it over Cod LSU, the 3-0 sweep we were all waiting for on the night to happen, we just didn't expect it to be in this series. Have a night Kalen, I mean have a night anyone from the Mars Hill roster. A well-earned and well-deserved 3-0 from the new kids on the block. Impressive stuff out of them. The response, solid. S and D, solid. And boy, oh boy, <laughs> does that not bode well for anyone else in the Southeast? <laughs> I mean, it, you said it wasn't perhaps yeah. the most stacked region of all of them in Division One, But again, that that only goes to show that, hey, maybe for, for, for Mars Hill, you could put up great numbers and walk out on top of this conference. Still so early on, still just night one, but... I feel confident saying that in the potential you see, right? You can just tell in the fundamentals of how they move around the map. It doesn't feel like a hard thing to call because of how good they look and their play calling and their decision making. And boy, did we get a taste of it yeah. all night across all three modes. And we really did. And like, just to go on the flip side for like, like Louisiana State for a second. One of the things that, you know, I, I, I kind of fear for now is like, yes, like, uh, you know, a game like this, you, you had some good moments, but like, you know, no, not a single time in the series did did Dorflin really start to step up. Did Petrov really have any sort of impact on any of the games? And it's like, you know, what can you do to get those guys involved inside of your game plan? Is it going to have to come directly from, you know, maybe bringing somebody up from a different roster? Is it going to have to do with, you know, just making sure that you know, when you play against a strong team that you know, they are, you're able to put your teammates in the best situations and maybe take a little bit of a backseat if you're Ron and or Pavi and just play a bit of a different role. Those are the conversations you have to have as a roster because, again, you have to play with these guys for the entirety of the season. So you better make damn sure that you're happy with what's going on or at least can make the right necessary changes uh, to afford your season to, you know, pan out the best it can be. But um, something has to change for Louisiana State. Um, yes, it's a very good Mars Hill esports team that you go up against, but you know that's not an excuse to just say, "Hey, we'll take a back seat on the back burner here." Uh, th these are the teams that you're going to have to face up against later on in the season if you can't make the necessary adjustments uh, from now until the point where you might meet this team again come playoffs. Um, you're just going to be dead in the water by the time the end of the season gets here. Couldn't have said it better myself. Sounds dramatic after night one, but uh, again, the way they're moving on the map, the productivity they were able to put out not quite up to standard in what simply is a league as competitive as this one is at this point especially in this division one especially here in the southeast region yep mars hill can't say enough how impressed you were with them of course there's still stuff they can go back and execute better you were kind of calling it in that search and destroy right you know maybe you could have made that one a little more dominant of a win it was already 6-4 but uh, again definitely for stuff for both teams to go back and learn still some good things for both to take as well maybe more so for the side of Mars Hill, but to have a look back at our maps at one final time of how we got to this point, it was a clinical uh, Fortress hard point to kick things off a near 100 point victory there, a uh, search and destroy where uh, again, some individual plays as you had kind of called and alluded to, LSU might have a strong point in, able to clutch them mm -hmm. up a few rounds to make that a little bit closer and then there in the respawn, they get a good one just by a four down and a stack to get a round win on the board but when push comes to shove and executing movement around the map, Mars Hill came out on top every time. And for a long time, it was Lions versus Tigers who was better in the series. The Lions proved to be the uh, the, the king of the crop overall. But uh, again, great series start to finish for Mars Hill. LSU, you have a lot of things that you can walk away from confident with uh, in terms of individual play styles. But once you are able to kind of figure out how to put a key lock in, put it all together, that's when things are really going to start to turn along. And that's when the season really gets started for you guys. Um, but up until that point, that's kind of uh, all that there really is to say on, on this best of five series. Congratulations to Mars Hill for the 3-0 sweep. Start off the C or their CCL season 1-0. and uh, For LSU, obviously you go down a little bit, but it's it's, it's not too bad. Uh, a big shout out again to the sponsors that make this stream possible and the, that have made the entirety of the CCL possible for this season. Uh, America's Navy. 
Uh, with esports being an extremely competitive environment, it requires you to think quick on your feet and communicate effectively with your teamwork and loyalty under pressure. All of these attributes are integral to various Navy careers. And if you'd like to learn more about the Navy's Goats and Glory team, you can go to Navy.com for more information. Also, thank you to Fandom as well uh, for being sponsors of the CCL. We do truly appreciate it here. Uh, and, and again, it goes to show how well we were able to make the entirety of the graphics projects and all that kind of stuff that we've done this season. Uh, this season of the CCL is shaping up to be an extremely fun one. Uh, and if, Cash, it wasn't already proven in the first two series that went to five games apiece uh the competition and the the level playing field has never been closer but skill levels never been higher absolutely the case it only gets more competitive year in and year out uh, again we, we continue singing the praises of the formatting this year really feeling like a solid way to put you know most like competition against one another the best of the best against the best of the best and that's through and through each level in each division so really excited to see what more this brings really glad that we got to bring night one action into this and uh Absolutely. yeah oh a barn burner we'll see what tomorrow brings <laughs> but i don't know that it'll quite live up to what we got tonight uh we were actually treated well, tomorrow's Valentine's Day, so you know what that means. We've got a love story for the first match on stream. Northwood going up against the Ottawa Braves for our 7.30 match tomorrow. That's going to be a fun one. But until that point in time, we appreciate everybody for coming out and watching. To the players, everybody on the production team that makes this possible on behalf of myself and Cash as well. We hope you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. We'll see you back here at 7.30 Eastern tomorrow for a lovely Valentine's Day broadcast. But until that point, stay safe. Have a great night.